Hey guys and girls, welcome back to another beautiful example video on this beautiful channel. I'm sorry if I sound a little sluggish and tired today. I am, sadly, and uh, my, my tongue has some kind of cut in it, so I can't really speak or swallow properly. So, excuse moi but you're going to have to deal with it today. I'm sorry. Tomorrow it should be fine. But anywho, let's get down to another example and stuff I want to just go through before we go into classes, right? Because classes is our main thing. That's where we go ahead and explode with all these crazy examples. So right now we just want to go through everything that's left. So multi-dimensional arrays is something that's left. So this is a two-dimensional array here. Usually we make one-dimensional arrays. Int array like this. That's a one-dimensional array. All right. Let's just make a uh, let's say four just to be because I made I already prepared this. This is what we're going to be making. Usually we'll make this. Okay, but now we're going to make a two-dimensional array with, that looks like a little box, right? So you can access something, uh, this is the position 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's the way it goes, or if it goes down. I'm not sure really, but it should be column for every column, and then the row. Oh, no, it should be like this, 0, 1, 2, 3. That's how it should be. So it looks at every column and go through, it goes through every row for that column. That's uh, how I think it is. So anywho, our size. Then how do we make it? This is how we make a regular, um, regular array. Well, multi-dimensional array. All you have to do is do this. Okay, there you go. Now you have a multi-dimensional array. Our size is four. So this is four columns and four rows. Alright, just like this. It becomes like this. It starts looking like this. This means that we have 16 positions. And this could be good in, if you're making a game with a grid, if you're making something where you have to keep track of things three-dimensionally or two-dimensionally like this in a, uh, in a uh, grid-type way in the computer. Okay, so good way to store stuff. Good things you can do. You can make three-dimensional arrays with a z-axis as well. Then it becomes a cube. And then you can go crazy with that. You can go crazy. You can do whatever. As long as you can visualize it for yourself, you'll be fine. This basically means it's an int array with an array of ints in it. Okay, so every one of these has an array of integers in it. That's what this basically means. Okay, so it's a bunch of one-dimensional arrays in a one-dimensional array. So I hope you can visualize that. Anywho, let's go ahead and initialize all of these to zero. And how do we do that? Well, you probably think it, oh, just... Go ahead and, and put our i in here equals zero, right? Well, how how is that? We need to specify this as well. We can't do this. We can't do this. Then it will initialize the diagonal like this, right? It will go zero zero. Then we'll go one one, two two three three. But what we need is we need to stay at zero zero one zero 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 one zero two zero three. That's what we need to do. Okay, we need to do that 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 that. Well, that means we need another for loop. We need to nest for loops. That's what it's called, nesting for loops. And what happens here is, my dear friends, that we have already in this scope, a scope is within the block, right, if you remember. In this scope, i is already defined. So we need another name for our variable here. It's the same thing. It's just that we give it another name so these don't collide, so we can differentiate them. So what happens here? Can you see what's going to happen? This is going to go, stay at 0. We're going to get here. We're going to come here. This is going to go through all of its loops. Within every one loop cycle of this, we will have all loop cycles of this. So this will go through 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3. Then we'll come back up here after this is ended, and we'll make this 1. Then we'll do 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, and etc., etc., until we have the full loop thingy done. So we'll go, and we're going to use the same thing to print it out. Okay, we're going to print this out in a beautiful way. So what we're going to do is we're going to just at the end of every cycle and line. Okay. Now this is going to look wrong, I think. Mm. This is going to, I mean, it's going to come out a little wrong because it's going to print them like this. Right. So for one, every row, we'll have one column. But it'll, it'll still be fine, I think. It'll still be fine. Um, 
Um, oh, whoops, whoops. That's not what I want to do. That's not what I want to do. You want to do that so they don't do the end line thingy. And then we have this right here. Okay. And a good way to check if this worked. In which, wh what is a column in a row? You know, let's learn this together once and for all because I never ever remember this. I did during my university course. I remember this, but then I forgot it again. But let's just see. Zero, zero is a two. We'll give everything the value one, actually. That is uh, in the first, whoops, uh, column or row, so to speak. So let's, let's do this. Let's see what it prints out now. So it printed out the first row there. So yeah, that's how I, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Or for one row, every column. So that's the one, that's the two, that's the three. So for every row, it went through all the columns. Probably that's the way it's supposed to be, rows and columns. All right, so remember that. If you see that, and if you're smarter than me, which you probably are, uh, then you're good. What if we did this? How would that look? That would become a diagonal, right, if I'm correct? Bam, diagonal right there. So I hope you can see that. I mean, I know it might be a little. Can you zoom? No, I'm not sure. Uh, well, I hope you can see that. But it became a diagonal anyway. And then we printed that out. So that's a multi-dimensional array. That's a 2D array for you. Uh, well, there are 3D arrays. I think you can figure that out. I want to make 2D dy dynamic arrays as well and show you that. Show you all kinds of different dynamic arrays. And then, because we've gone through pointers already, so we should be fine. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have a lot of examples coming. But yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something and have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.